he presented me. I'm Silvia from the south of Brazil, the Federal University of Rio or Grande do Sul. And that was Carmelo Benin and his Pinocchio for the radio uh, part uh, when the uh, Blue Fairy uh, intends him to take a medicine that he doesn't want to. Uh, and uh, it, this, is, this was uh, uh, presented in 1974 as Pinocchio. The other, the other names are my students that take part of my research and couldn't come. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to call attention to what we propose here in linguistic terms. Since I will be presenting a paper that goes between, that surfs, I use it, experiences li lived in pseudo Italian and quasi French, with writing in Portuguese and translation to English by an American who lived in and studied in Brazil. Therefore, we feel free to stutter these languages. And considering that the writing of this research paper is also a creation of knowledge, we thus assume that we can here co-move ourselves in gendering a new production from stuttering research. Between 1959 and 2002, a hurricane, a hurricane went through Italy. 1959 was the year in which Carmelo Bene debuted as an actor in Caligula by Albert Camus having been authorized by Camus himself to perform Caligula in his own way. In bombastic presentations at the cantinas and between 1961 and 1963 at his laboratory theater on the ground floor of a small building in the Trastevere region, all in Rome, Carmelo Ben invented an original and surprising artistic career, career path. In the most complete survey of his works, there are 59 theatrical performances, some of which are new editions of the same original play, nine films, short, medium and feature films, nine records, 16 television movies, televised play, plays or readings of fiction or poetry, 21 different radio broadcasts, as well as several recordings of seminars and interviews. The numbers alone don't tell us about the singularity of his work, but they hint at its exuberance. Um, I uh, there is uh, at this moment in at this moment for many years uh, a dispute between Benny's hairs in Italy. So I cannot show uh, the things that, are, that belong to uh, his uh, personal archives. And I, I will just show some, uh, these are rare books, uh, some of them, uh, and I, while I speak, and I will show some uh, a part of the uh, television Macbeth, okay? Uh, Professor Pier Giorgio Jacquet from Perugia, Italy, suggested that I allow Carmelo Beni to be near me as a ghost or an apparition while I traveled through southern Italy for the first time in search of his traces in 2014. If researching means giving forms to a plane of forces, here it is about to activating that plane and finding words that are worthy of such intensities. A hurricane passed through Italy and continues to produce effects. The Carmelo Beni hurricane, controversial, scandalous, provocative, humble, seems to be part of Italy's social fabric, with winds reaching France, where he performed more than once. It's not necessary to say that I won't present anything by Carmelo Beni, but I will try to cultivate environment so that he can haunt us. Deleuze says in Deleuze from A to Z that he does not like theater, except for Carmelo Bene and Bob Wilson. In fact, he saw at least five different plays by Bene, some of them in Italy. Jacquet highlights the mutating and inapprehensive character of Bene's work, 
which makes it difficult to put into boxes in precise and linear stages like the other greats of theater. Deleuze himself, a few years after writing one manifesto less, watched Manfred by Benny and recognized new and different characteristics. Quote, the power of an artist is renovation. Carmelo Benny is proof of this. Deleuze. Carmelo Benny's theatrical creations were becoming more radical over the, over the years until the conception of what he was to call actorial machine. What does he mean when Benny talks of an actoriality as machine? How can one approach the concepts of the actorial machine, actorial machine in Benny and the war machine in Deleuze and Guattari? And how to speak thus of a stuttering machine? A first clue of how to approach it was given by Deleuze himself, who, in his one manifesto less, he speaks of Richard III by Benny Shakespeare as being the constitution in scene of a man of war, with his prosthesis, deformities, defects, variations. For Deleuze, this is the objective of Benny's staging, the engendering of this man of war, the invention of war machine. Other writers also use this notion to refer to Carmelo Bene actorial machine, such as Manganaro or Manganaro, the his a personal and intellectual friend of both Deleuze and Bene, who translated the uh, Bene's um, uh, opera uh, uh, to in, uh, French, into French. Manganaro, who referring to not just one play, but to the artist's work as a whole, he speaks of the, quote, precise and quick elaboration of a work that will quickly function as a war machine. What characterizes the war machine is its exteriority in relation to the state. It is connected to nomadism in displacement and speed, establishing a thought from the outside the outside of representation. In his final place, he radicalized the proposal of the actoral machine, a fundamental proposition that crowns his elaboration in theater and that was being developed by him with every play, especially the last ones. The actor, the actor has no substance, substance, nor does the performance. Then we speak of the amplified actoral machine which is much different from an actor who uses a microphone so that the audience can better hear his words. It's not an actor who says lines, it's a machine that produces sounds and it's amplified. The use of the playback, increasingly more frequent, is not used as a commodity or to facilitate an, any such undertaking, but is an instrument of creation. Uh, I cite Benny now. Quote, the actor is not enough, nor is the great actor. It's necessary to be a machine, which I have defined as actorial. What is an actorial machine? Firstly, it will be amplified. But the amplification is a strange thing. It's not a gonflage. That is, it's not an increase. It is when I get so close, he, he does like this, I get so close that the contours are undone. Theater is everything that is not understood." Under, unquote. In 1999, as the director of the theater sector at the Venice Biennale, Benny proposed a laboratory with artists, musicians, actresses, composers, percussionists, sound technicians, and some scholars. The proposal was to experiment the emptiness of the scene, actoriality as a machine. Quote, it's not to seek this or that way of being in seen, but are of living it." Unquote Manganaro. Manganaro attests to the impossibility of this endeavor. He was one of the scholars there at this laboratory. Because the technique and virtuosity of the guest artists intensified the spectacular. Spectacular. Yeah. While with Carmelo Beni, the theater became a known place quote, orphan of subject and language. According to Manganaro, the actorial machine is unwitnessable. The Carmelo Ben actorial machine explodes the spectacle, the spectator voyeur, the function of the critic, because, and the function of the critic, because there is not anything, there's no, there's not anything to witness, there is no possible commentary. 
His theater is wandering in chaos. My goodness. The Ectoral Machine does not bear historicizing. In the book Il Teatro Senza Spettacolo, The Theater Without a Spectacle, one of the results of the Venetian laboratory, it can be read that with Benny there is no longer the story of Romeo and Juliet or Richard III told by Shakespeare. Quote, but Richard III event or a Shakespeare event that catalyzes energies, powers and tensions. Unquote. The authors of the first, first part of the book, I call this book a fl flux bo fluxus book, you know, a flux book, uh, um, because uh, the many, many the authors they they wrote three by three, and the author of the first part of this book, um, Dumoulier, Manganaro, and Scala, Andrei Scala, states, quote. Here we draw the difference between directing, which distribu distributes and des designates parts to each one, and the point of no return of the actoral machine, which captures the energies of the happening and assumes all voices. Happening or event, which is the, 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 the lesion? It's a problem because I've seen, well, this isn't something I, I tell you actors. Uh, the authors emphasize that actoriality as a machine breaks apart normativeness of the sense of the text as well as the triad of Aristotelianism, time, action, and place, that the director's theater traditionally venerates. Quote, against all catharsis, the actoral machine is raised now as war machine. This is um, a Pinocchio. I, I would like to. Uh, there, there are so many things to show. This is. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have not many things uh, by Benny uh, in the internet uh, on stage. Many of the things we we uh, we have are uh, for television, made for television. And it, as he was. Uh, uh, he, he was a movie maker also, he has been uh, in uh, making films. Uh, all the, the things for television, it's, they, they have a special treatment for the medium. So this is, uh, this is a one of the one Pinocchio, uh, 81, 82 Pinocchio, he, he had around five Pinocchios in his career. Uh, it's a photo, but we, we find uh, part of it uh, uh, filmed. The same authors of this uh, part of the Teatro Senza Spettacolo, the same authors say it's no longer about playing a role or um, of searching for the sense of a text, but turning the voice into sound material. For them, the director's theater is commentary of the text. If, quote, the dramaturgy excludes actoriality, Unquote. By making the actor's body mere textual expression, actoriality in turn is the joy of the inorganic and the search for the emptiness of the scene. Maurizio Grande, a scholar who participated at the lab in the laboratory uh, at the v Venice Venetian Biennale in '89, affirms that Carmelo Bene is the actor machine or the anti-language machine of the actor's non-art. And he adds, quote, from the Elizabethans to Lewis, from Shakespeare to La Fogue, from Musset to Kleist, Carmelo Beni rewrites the unwritten, the unspeakable signifier of the subject without language and of the actor without persona, unquote. Jacquet, said he had already, Jacquet, uh, I had, um, uh, uh, Pierre Jacquet and Manganaro uh, were very close, at the same time, uh, specialists on Benny's work, uh, friends of Benny's friends, and, uh, um, and uh, well, and uh, at the same time, I, uh, they, they help a lot, they are helping a lot in my, my research. 
Pier Giorgio Ake said he had already seen Carmelo Beni stay for a half an hour hand, hunched over a single page of a text. He also said that after Beni, Pinocchio, the classic text by Carlo Collodi, was never the same again. He said to still have with Beni's scenic work captured or understood some verses by Leopardi, for example, that he did not understand before. Carmelo Beni worked a lot with great texts and with them made a non-textual theater. We can think of these movements as incisions in a Möbius strip. Cuts are produced in the forms, facilitating access to the forces. Deleuze gives us good clues for following these movements. In his one manifesto less, he emphasizes that Beni makes surgical cuts in the texts, removes form removing from them the elements of power and continuous variations, allowing virtualities to appear. It's, it's not only in the work on the texts that Carmelo Bene provokes variations. All his theater is of continuous variation. With whispers, rowers, amplification and playback, he takes on his variation as stuttering, despite him not using these same terms. With good reason, André Scala says that Deleuze and Guattari probably thought about Carmelo Beni when they wrote Plateau No. 3, The Geology of Morality, Who Does the Earth Think It Is? Hence, Professor Challenger, the strange character by Conan Doyle, appropriated by Deleuze and Guattari in that plateau, who made the earth howl with his vocal metamorphosis and his voice becoming increasingly hoarse, would be, according to Scala, suitable to the de-articulations promoted by Beni in, this theme, in his scene. Stuttering, Parnay, Claire Parnay recalls, or a shout, or a silence, quote, would be like language line of flight, or line of escape. You have to decide, okay. Speaking in one's one language as a foreigner, making a minority use of language. Also there in the, let's see. Uh, so uh, this is Parnay, unquote, would be like a, a quote, uh, like a line of flight or line of escape speaking in one's own language as a foreigner, making a mi minority use of language." Unquote. All of this is also there in Deleuze's first writing on Beni, this one manifesto lies. Carmelo Beni puts everything in continuous variation, and to the obstacles that he previously imposed on the actors through costumes and scenery can be added obstacles to language in the incessant production of a stuttering machine which is not opposed to, but drills, digs, stumbles, gargles, regurgitates speech, hence also producing lines of escape, by going beyond binaries or turning one's back on them. We can, by going beyond binaries or turning one's back on them, we can speak of Benny's work as a stuttering war machine. And I, I will just uh, show you that part, this is a small part of, uh, of, um, and I have a bonus also of, uh, let's see, Macbeth or so. This is for Henry, but just to add, this is for TV, but it's a play, uh, the play Macbeth, uh, Deleuze uh, also Song theater years before.
This was written by in this flux flux uh, book by those scholars, um, and, I, and, and I guess it's not not that it's not human, but I guess uh, it has much a bit with organic with organs or not with organs, you know, in this of this. And if uh, you have in, in German this text, this is text, um, one manifesto less about Benin, you have it in German because in Brazil the translation was, uh, the first translation was in 2010. Yeah, we had from Argentina in Spanish, but we didn't have 